ask a business person if he or she is following corrupt practices, and the answer will be a resounding, of course not. The problem is it's very easy to slip into corrupt practices when you think you're just following local custom. But how do you tell the difference? Well, here to help us is INSEAD Professor of Ethics and Social Responsibility, Craig Smith. Thanks for being with us. Thanks, Shelley. All right, how do companies get caught up in corruption without realizing it? And we're basically speaking, I would imagine, of emerging markets or where corporate governance isn't in so, place. So we're, we're seeing a lot more examples of companies facing problems now as they, as they globalize, as they get into emerging markets, where, as we know from reliable data sources, the prevalence of corruption uh, may be quite high. And so companies are finding themselves operating in environments where uh, corruption can be, can be a fairly endemic practice. It's beyond understanding business etiquette, which you might want from one country to another. I mean, this is operating practices in an environment where there is probably not very much of a legal structure. So, Well, the legal structure may be there. It's, it's important to note that uh, the bribery, certainly of government officials, is illegal in every country in the world, uh, but it's, the, the law is not often enforced, so the, 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 the sanctions are potentially there, but the enforcement uh, can be really quite weak. What, what kind of corruption might one encounter that could be maybe not so obvious? Can something come to mind? Sometimes it's, it, it is very obvious, and I think it's, it's, uh, uh, it's a naive management that finds itself suddenly uh, discovering that in, in, in certain parts of its operations, uh, bribery is a fairly commonplace uh, practice because there are, uh, there are places you can go to, to establish the extent to which bribery is prevalent in various countries of the world. The Transparency International Corruptions Perception Index uh, is often seen as a very reliable guide. And so when companies are operating in countries that are, are ranked well down the list, that are seen to be uh, particularly corrupt, they really should have, uh, uh, have some sense that this, this, is, this, this is likely to be a problem and some way of, of, of dealing with it. What are some of the costs of corruption to businesses and, and countries? Is there, can you put a number on it? Well, the, the, the costs are, uh, are, are manifold. If, if, the, if an organization is caught, and that's a big, that's a big if, right, uh, the costs can be quite considerable. And you look at the recent example of Siemens. It has cost Siemens, I believe, close to 5 billion euros uh, to pay penalties, to uh, put in place a compliance program in response to the discovery of widespread corruption throughout its operations, bribery of foreign government officials. Uh, and it's worth noting in that story, what happened there was the, the company, in a sense, continued with a practice that had been in place uh, for, for many years, uh, but didn't realize the ramifications of the introduction of the OECD Convention Against Bribery and the, the laws put in place that, that governed it as a German uh, company when it was engaging in bribery of foreign government officials. Siemens found itself exposed and facing, uh, uh, facing legal action and the, the costs were really quite considerable. And not just in terms of uh, the, the penalties, not just in terms of uh, the, the cost of putting in place a compliance program, uh, but 50 of the top 100 managers at Siemens lost their jobs over this. So major uh, restructuring of the organization as a consequence. And today, uh, as I understand it, Siemens is able to win business on the basis of being, uh, of not being a, a, a corrupt player in the, in the market. I wonder how you can enter an emerging market or a developing market or a frontier market um, without sullying yourself, Can, is that possible? It's very difficult, very difficult indeed in some, in some countries. So in uh, certain Asian countries, um, there's often the belief that you can't do business there without paying. Uh, there, it has to be said, there are companies that are 
uh, are successful in taking a stance against bribery, uh, perhaps initially at some considerable cost, but having established that they're not going to pay, uh, the, the request for payment go away, and they're able to, to operate successfully. Uh, in, um, uh, in India, for example, a, company, a country that's ranked 84th in the Corruption Perception Index, and ranked low down means you're, uh, there's, there's, there's a big problem with corruption, uh, that, uh, that, that Tata has been able to build a reputation for itself uh, for, not, for not paying. So there are examples uh, of, of companies, many companies in fact, that do take that non-corruption stance, sometimes with, uh, with, with some considerable uh, cost. What kind of cost? I mean, do they get avoided? Do they get uh, terrorized? Do they? Uh, oh, a there's a, a story. Um, I, I believe it's it, it's true of, of of Infosys refusing to pay to have uh, a landline uh, installed in its, uh, its offices when it first started out, and uh, two years they went without a, a, a landline telephone service as a, as a result. Uh, so services that are denied, goods that are stuck in, in customs, um, lots of difficulties that in some cases lead companies to say, I'm not going to do business in this particular country. I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to uh, be able to stay in, in Russia, for example. You've got I I I IKEA uh, struggling to make its, uh, its operations in, in Russia work uh, relative to a background of... Uh, uh, of corruption. Now it has to be said that it's often a lot easier for uh, the Tatars, uh, the Akias of this world to take a, an anti-corruption stance than it is for an SME, a small medium-sized enterprise, particularly a local SME, uh, much much harder for them to take a stand. Craig Smith, thank you for being with us on NCAD Knowledge. Thank you, Shay.